Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at three new significant updates for three of the most popular emulators I cover on the channel. We're going to be taking a look at Simu, an emulator for the Wii U, Yuzu, an emulator for the Nintendo Switch, and last but by no means least, we're also going to be taking a look at a very, very significant update to Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at Simu, the emulator for the Wii U, where we have been given some brand new news by its developers about its next version release. This release is going to be titled 1.15.2, which, as we all know, means it's probably going to be a more minor, more so than a major emulator version update. Let's quickly go over everything we've been told so far. In relation to a release date, they have told us it's going to be released in the next one or two days, so I would definitely expect it to release before the end of January. And in relation to features, let's just quickly go over those now. They have given us gamepad audio support. This is going to be pretty awesome considering it's going to mean that Star Fox Zero is now for the very first time going to be playable on Simu Emulator. We are also getting several audio bug fixes and while nothing is listed just yet, I will of course do my full update and changelog video once it gets released to let all of you guys know exactly what those changes are. We're also going to be seeing optimizations for games that use the high GPU buffer cache accuracy. For example, a game that uses this is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Hopefully that means we're going to be getting optimizations to that game and obviously any game that also uses high buffer cache settings. We're also going to be getting optimizations for rare CPU instructions. We have been told that this in fact gives a significant performance boost to games like Smash and Pokken Tournament. We're also going to be getting changes to the upscaling filters as we have been told they have been completely reworked and they can now apparently be completely customized with graphics packs. We obviously don't have any more information than what they've told us so far, so we're going to have to actually wait till 1.15.2 is released to know exactly how this new feature or function is going to work. They have also told us, and praise the lord for this, that the V-Sync option in CMU's options window is now actually going to do something. If you're not aware of it, previously to this, it basically didn't do anything or at least was buggy in the way that it didn't really work. And hopefully, now that they have fixed this V-Sync option, we'll no longer be forced to use either our NVIDIA or AMD enforced V-Sync options. This is hopefully going to be especially useful for me considering I use both a 75Hz panel as my secondary and a 144 hertz panel as my main monitor. Moving on to the final two things we have on this list of changes, we have various input fixes and obviously as of now we have no indication as to what these input fixes are and finally they have also told us that they are planning on setting up a bug tracker, more info on that soon apparently. Hopefully we're going to get some kind of integrated UI option for the reporting and debugging of games that would definitely be a very, very useful feature in this emulator, considering at this point in time game compatibility is probably one of the most important things. Moving swiftly on, let's take yet another look at Yuzu Emulator. Now that many of its bugs have been successfully fixed, asynchronous GPU emulation has now been re-added to this Nintendo Switch emulator, which is going to offer all of its users much, much better performance in practically every single game. To explain exactly what this new feature does, I'm going to have to first explain exactly how this Switch emulator was working previous to this asynchronous GPU emulation. So before this update, all of the operations for everything Yuzu was doing was being done on one single core out of your CPU. The Switch console itself has four cores, which means that all four of these cores, as well as all of the GPU operations, were being done on one singular core, and regardless of what CPU you are using, it is still only going to be using one single core. What using this asynchronous GPU emulation option does is it offloads all of the GPU emulation to a second core or thread, which is basically going to free up a lot of CPU bound resources on the single core on which all of the CPU emulation is still taking place on. It's basically going to be semi at least removing some of the GPU operation bottleneck from your singular CPU core and obviously while a multi-core update in future for this emulator is going to further improve performance, give us potentially more accurate emulation since obviously the Switch is a 4-core console and hopefully it might even improve game compatibility. 
Let's not get too carried away though, this multi-core update is most likely going to take months and months of work, maybe even years, so we are going to most likely be waiting a very, very long time to see anything in relation to a working multi-core feature for Yuzu Emulator. Performance wise, at least on my own system, I have jumped about 10 to 15 frames per second when using asynchronous GPU emulation in comparison to not using it. And as I said, it has worked in pretty much every single game, at least the ones in which I have tested it. So while Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are still very, very buggy on this emulator, you can see right here in the Viridian Forest that I have jumped from around 30 frames per second, as you saw in my last video covering it, up to the mid to high. 50s. In relation to Pokemon Let's Go's compatibility on this emulator, it still runs very very well even on much lower end systems than mine, but unfortunately it still has a lot of bugs, like you can see this weird repeated frame thing that's happening to me in gameplay right now. It's quite annoying and obviously at this point in time it's quite unavoidable also, and speaking of unavoidable things, we also still have to deal with RNG based or random game crashes, which can basically happen at any point in time at all. Obviously, once anything changes in relation to the compatibility of this game, or indeed any other game on this emulator, I will be sure to let you guys know as soon as possible. Moving on once again, let's take a look at yet another awesome update in a series of awesome updates from the team over at Xenia Emulator. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you, this is indeed Halo 3 running in this Xbox 360 emulator. In this brand new update, they have completely fixed almost all of the particle rendering effects in Halo 3 and Halo ODST. While particle effects might not sound like a big update, it is quite spectacular to load into game and see just how many new effects are rendered. I was actually quite surprised by just how many things were missing before this update. Yet another thing they have completely fixed is the muzzle flash on all of the weapons. They now correctly work as well as all of the tracers from the weapons. Something that wasn't fixed in this update but was fixed very recently is the fact that water physics now semi-correctly work. We will in fact be able to get a better look at just how the physics on the water are being rendered just a little bit later on in the video. But when you consider that it is just over a month ago that this game and pretty much all of the Halo games weren't going in game at all and now it's running completely fluidly at a locked 30 fps with almost perfect rendering it's absolutely awesome and really really is a credit to the development team and especially to triangle the developer who has given us all of these changes so when we come to this small waterfall area you can see exactly what the state of water physics rendering at this point in time is if i shoot at it or if i jump into it it's going to react in the exact same way it's going to have this really strange square output so let's just move and progress through the level a little bit more so we can see even more graphic level effects which are now rendering that had never rendered before. When you get to this waterfall area you can see that once again not only are all of these rain droplets appearing in front of us but all of the water and indeed the mist at the base of this waterfall is now rendering for the very first time. Skipping forward just a little bit, let's get ourselves into some combat where once again we're going to see just how many new visual effects are rendering. There's probably about 15 or 20 new effects rendering just in this scene alone. For example, all of these weapon tracers, the plasma tracers from all of their weapons, the blood coming off the enemies, the gas pop that happens when you get a headshot, the effects that happen when shields drop on enemies, there's literally a countless countless amounts of new rendered effects, this update has brought Halo 3 even closer to being absolutely perfectly emulated on PC. Let's just pick up this plasma pistol and do a little bit more testing in this area which as previously seen in videos of mine was a very demanding area and right now I am once again as I have been throughout this video been locked to an almost perfect 30 frames per second. Again, you can see all of these brand new rendered effects like all the tracers coming from the ships, the tracer coming from the turret, all of the fire coming from all of these enemies and all of the physics interactions that they are having with the water, which obviously at this point in time aren't anywhere near perfect with the weird square outlines. Regardless of any of that stuff, I have absolutely no doubt that the developers of Xenia are going to be hard at work 
fixing all of these problems and they'll have this game running in a tip top shape and rendering perfectly in no time at all. So with all of these improvements to Halo 3, Halo ODST and countless other games from these updates and indeed the fact that Red Dead Redemption is moving even closer to being fully playable at very good performance levels on this emulator, there really has never been a better time to contribute and help to support the development of Xenia. Down in the description of this video you'll find the links to each of the respective Patreon funds for each of the emulators I've covered in this video, so if you want to help with the development of any of them head on over to those links and pledge your support. As always guys, the best place to see all of the future updates for any and all of these emulators is right here at BSOD Gaming. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.